Time for the Rescue Rundown. Again, I'm Dave Morris alongside Abby Wolf from the Central Oklahoma Humane Society. Great to have you as always. Thank you for having us. Thanks for stopping in. We must be up to episode 56 or 57 at this point. Something like that. We got started last fall and we've made it to another fall into the Thanksgiving holiday season. I don't know if you can see behind us the uh, holiday orna ornaments up across the street over at the Cocord Building and the Devon property, which always does a fantastic job. Yes. It is the holiday season. We have the lights behind us. And today on the Rescue Rundown, top 10 things be thankful for to be thankful for there you see the uh, promo right there but yeah. first we have a guest to introduce that's right this is sparkle and as you know last week we talked about how it's adopt a senior pet month um, and this little gal is a senior uh, but she's fabulous she is a standard <laughs> poodle um, who knows all the tricks you know what you see is what you get within a senior pet True. so she knows how to sit and shake and she is a really great addition um, to any family because she is so mild-mannered that I think she'd be down for just about anything. So she's currently in your foster program, right? That's right. So she is available for adoption today and has been living with a foster who tells me that she is just a sweetheart. And I witnessed this this morning <laughs> for myself when I found her snuggling with my personal dog, Penny, uh -oh. in the corner in my office. So I know that she loves other dogs and she, she loves the company well of people. Others. That's right. She's a great girl. She knows how to shake. You want to show them? Here, shake. Good girl. Show it off. Good job, yeah. Sparkle. Good job. <laughs> she knows all the tricks. Sparkle available for adoption at the Central Oklahoma Humane Society. They're located at 7500 Northwestern. You can also find more information on their website at okhumane. Dot org. Um, typical size for a poodle? I don't know much about the whole poodle range. Yeah, standard poodles can come pretty large. She is on the about medium sized for a standard poodle. Um, she's she's getting a little older, so she's adding a few extra pounds, Aren't but nothing all? a few walks won't <laughs> cure. Um, but she, yeah, she's a pretty big gal. I think she weighs in at about 70 pounds. Okay, and standard, uh, you mentioned she just had a trim, but standard yes. fur length, I guess That's you right. Say? So poodles are actually hypoallergenic, so that means that they don't shed. Um, but we've actually trimmed her down because she came in with some matting and some different skin stuff. So she has been shaved down, so she's a little uh, light in the fur area right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. As opposed to our guest last week, Prim, that was just a fur ball. Oh my goodness, yes. I think I still have fur in my <laughs> mouth and teeth. <laughs> Super friendly kitty, though. That's right. All right, Abby is going to present us with her top 10 list of things that she's thankful for. You know, I think we should start with how far our community has come in the world of animal welfare. Um, all of these have to do with animal welfare, but I'm so proud to say that our city shelter is actually taking in less animals and ad adopting or transferring out more animals than ever before. Um, we're almost to our community goal of 75% for the live release rate, and that means that the animals coming into the shelter are leaving alive um, and we are we're really proud to be a part of that and proud of the partnership that has got us all there it's good to see when you implement some programs with uh, set goals and quantifiable objectives it's good to start seeing that needle move right absolutely and you know it's made such a huge impact with different programs that we've implemented this year as well as the shelter um, we have we've together working together have really moved that needle all right, numbers two and three, I believe, are going to be together on this next graphic. Boom, there they are. Nice. Well, number two is the public's response to our Rita's Angel Fund. We have come in here, I don't know how many times, talking about the Rita's Angel Fund, and you guys know how much I care about this uh, this fund that we have to, to pull animals out of the shelter who would otherwise be euthanized because they have some kind of health issue. Something simple, like this gal was actually on the Rita's Angel Fund. Um, my penny was on the Rita's Angel Fund. There's so many great animals that we're able to save their life because of something small that just a simple vet bill could cure. And I believe number three was uh, the local animal control officers. That's right, we love our local animal control officers. They are at the front lines of our cause every single day and they keep our city safe and, um, and it doesn't matter what it is. If there's an elephant walking down the street, they're gonna have to take that elephant in and we know how hard they work and, and the great work that they're doing over at Oklahoma City Animal Welfare. Well, if there is an elephant walking down the street, uh, <laughs> Hopefully my crew is going to grab a camera. Yeah, we'll give you guys a call. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and you couldn't do what you do without all the volunteers. Oh my goodness. Our volunteers and fosters, and this includes the Oklahomans crew, who's actually coming in tomorrow to cool. volunteer. Yes. We couldn't do anything uh, without the volunteers and fosters that just keep our programs running and keep our pets healthy and happy. And we're just lucky to have everybody that's involved in our mission. 
I know you mentioned a few months before the elections, hey, there's a state question that we have a specific stance on, uh, and that was state question 777. Yeah, we're so thankful that state question 777 was voted down by Oklahomans, uh, mostly because there was a huge loophole um, in the language there that would have made puppy mills easier to have. Um, also, there was some vagueness about, you know, whether animals were livestock or not, our pets were livestock or not. So we're happy that Oklahomans chose no on state question 777. All right, so moving on, adoption. Yes, so um, people who choose adoption, we're so thankful that people are choosing adoption over shopping. I believe that was the phrase you rolled out a few months ago or, or you mentioned in that segment was adopt, don't shop. Adopt, don't shop. And 3,000 families alone in our program have already decided to do that this year. So for, if you're one of those 3,000 people, thank you so much. And if you're not and you're looking for a pet, um, adoption is such a wonderful way to save a life and also find the pet that you're looking for. Another big talking point, a uh, strong stance for the Central Oklahoma Humane Society is spaying and neutering. Yes, we're trying to put ourselves out of a job, essentially. <laughs> so this year we're going to hit our biggest surgery numbers ever. We're going to pass 14,000. I feel pretty confident about that. And um, we, we're trying to basically keep animals out of the shelter by spaying and neutering your pets. You can help us do that and save more lives. And earlier this year, you guys received a generous donation from the Watershed Fund. Watershed Animal Fund granted us money this year to start a bottle baby program. We have blown our goals out of the water for the bottle baby nursery this year, and we've got, but we've been able to go back into relocation, which is really helping to tick down those intake numbers at our city shelter, which basically means that we take pets places where they need adoptions to happen, where they don't have the pet overpopulation problems that we do. I believe the little kitty we had last week, Prim, uh, may have been a bottle baby at one point. Maybe. She was, yeah. They, she was a part of an eyelid group that was um, in pretty bad shape when they came in. So our bottle baby fosters, they wake up at all hours of the night, bottle feeding and, and taking care of the little ones that are in our programs. We mentioned earlier the Rita's Angel Fund as well as their website, okhumane.org. And if you want to participate through donations, that will certainly be accepted, right? Oh my goodness, yes. Rita's Angel Fund right now has a lot of needs, so that's at okhumane.org slash Rita's. But if you'd like to give to just our general mission, okhumane.org is a great place to do it because, and I, I can't stress this enough, the donors that give to any nonprofit, not just the Central Oklahoma Humane Society, keep our doors open, keep those lives being saved, and we're just lucky to be able to live out our mission and do as our donors want us to do, which is save lives. And finally, uh, number 10 on the 10 things that Abby and the Central Oklahoma Humane Society are thankful for this holiday yes. season. You, you mentioned the Oklahoma, but I'll say this, we are certainly happy to be partnered up with you to share your story, to help in any way we can. And thank you very much for appearing on this segment with well, us every course, week. Of course, well, this isn't where our partnership even starts. A lot of people see this Rescue Rundown episode and they, they think, wow, that's really cool that they do that every week. But there's so much more behind these walls that are happening um, in support of our mission, including Big Wing, Big Wing Interactive. We have volunteer groups that come in and out all the time on behalf of the Oklahomans. So of course, we're very thankful to have you guys as our community partners and we hope to do much more in 2017. Absolutely, absolutely. There you have it, 10 things to be thankful for this holiday season. Now, before we let you go, um, you mentioned it's Senior Pet Month, but you also have a big microchip event coming up. Yes, it's coming up in December. We have yet to name the date publicly, okay. uh, but we are going to be giving away some chances for free microchipping and um, some pretty inexpensive ways to get vaccines coming up, sponsored by Hudeberg Subaru. Very nice. Anything else we should know about? You know what? I think today is going to be Sparkles Day, <laughs> and I really hope so. You know I have a soft spot for the seniors. Um, and. And I, I think today is going to be her day. So if you're looking for a pet who's mild-mannered, come, come and check her out. She's great. Look at how adorable the dog is. Aww. <laughs> Sparkle, thanks for stopping by. We much appreciate that. Thanks for shaking hands. All right. Good, good talk. <laughs> Abby, thanks as always. Thank you. For Rescue Rundown on NewsOK.com and OKHumane.org.